In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a Facebook page for your music studio. So when you're logged into Facebook, over on the left somewhere you should see pages. This moves around a lot, so just look for pages. And then a button to create a new page. Again, this may look slightly different for you, but it should say something similar over there. Then it gives you a choice between business or brand and community or public figure. We're going to go for business or brand. And we need to name our page. So the category you want to go for is music school. Then you can put in your address here. Now, if you're teaching at home, you may want to put in this don't show my address here so that it doesn't actually show on your page. Or if it is a public space or if you're happy to show your home address, you can just leave that unchecked. Our next step is to upload a profile picture. Either a professional picture of you would be great or a logo if you prefer. If it is just you running your own personal studio, or if you're a big part of the studio, if it's a small enough school, I'd recommend you go with a picture of yourself. Facebook is really a place for people, not a place for businesses, and even a business page tends to look better with a profile picture rather than a logo, but a logo is fine if that's what you prefer. For the cover photo, you're definitely going to want to go with a photo. I'd recommend something candid a photo of you and your or one of your teachers with their students having fun. For most of us this uh, Facebook online booking tool is not going to work out because we have our own way of booking our lessons so I'm going to say not now. So this is what our page looks like so far it's looking pretty good. We have our profile pic up the top sorry our cover picture up the top here and then our logo as the page logo. We can add buttons up the top here and we can create new posts here. Obviously there's not a lot of content on here first uh, straight away but there is there are several settings that it's going to be a good idea to get sorted out straight away. So first of all let's add a button. You might choose contact us or send email or send a message or a call would be the most likely ones for us. I would go with contact us to send people to your website and send them to your website contact page. So now that button is showing to people. So over on this side menu here we have a few different options. We're going to go now to page settings to make sure everything is set up the way we want it. I wouldn't change any of these settings unless you find you need something. For example, if you're getting spam posts to your page or anything, you can turn off visitor posts, but I haven't found that ever to be a problem. Or any of these other settings you may dive into later. But we're going to go straight away to page info. And it's very important that we complete our about section here. So, so far I've entered something in the description. I recommend you use max out their character limit there to describe your studio. We've entered a username, which is going to be my studio name is all one word, ideally. Then our website and an email address where people can contact us. I would recommend you also put in a phone number there if you have one for your studio. And then office hours that you're open. So it's good to have these in here so that people know when you offer lessons and when to expect to be able to call. So let's say they can call from 12 to 7, something like that. And then maybe on Saturday we open until lunchtime. Next area we're going to go to is templates and tabs. I like the standard template for most of us. However, I am going to turn off events. I'm going to leave reviews on in case people want to leave reviews there. You can prompt parents to do that. 
I'm going to turn off groups, unless you have a group that's linked to your page that is open to the public, I wouldn't recommend you have that on. And offers are unlikely to be relevant either, although you may want to turn on services. Depends on what you want to do with your page and what you, how much detail you want to put on there. If you have any other staff working with you, such as an admin support or other teachers that you want to have post on your page and stuff like that, then you're going to set them up under page roles. You just go to assign a new page role and you can add um, the person in here just by searching for them as by their name. If you have a studio Instagram account, it's a good idea to connect that up here. So you just click on connect and it will take you through to Instagram where you can authorize that and connect the two together. So that's pretty much all the settings you need to update straight away. We'll go back to our page, this is what it's looking like. Obviously it's pretty empty at the moment, so you're going to want to start adding posts. That's just a matter of creating them, writing something interesting, and either scheduling that for later or publishing it right now. As you start to publish things and see what gets liked and what doesn't, you'll see things showing up in your Insights tab. It's a good idea to check in here about every month or so if you are focusing on your page just to see how it's getting on. But I would say that's only if you're mainly focusing on this as a marketing channel and it's a big part of your strategy, which it won't be for a lot of studios. You may like to check in here though about once a quarter and see if the actions you're taking, the posts you're making, are making any difference. The publishing tools area, which you'll find in that side menu, is where you can schedule posts to be published at a later date. So you just click on create, you can write your post there, and then you can change it to schedule here, and you can schedule it for a specific time. If you are going to schedule things for beyond six months, I believe it is, four months, six months, something like that, then you will need a separate tool to do that. Facebook won't allow you to do that natively, but it is handy that they allow you to schedule posts here and to see the posts you've already scheduled and change anything about them before they go live. The last thing to look at in this side menu is your inbox, and that's where messages that come directly to your page rather than to you personally will land. You should get notifications about these, but it is a good idea to check in there every once in a while just in case you miss one because you don't want someone to be waiting for a reply from you. So that's how you set up a Facebook page, nice and simple and easy. Any questions, just let me know.